When there's trouble, you know who to call. Young Justice. No, whoa, 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 whoa! No, 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 no! That's the Teen Titans theme song. Oh no, no, no! This is 1998. It's Young Justice. No, uh, this looks like the Teen Titans. This smells like the Teen Titans. It's Teen Titans. Well, strap in for the next hour because your geek history lesson on Young Justice is now in session. Hello and welcome to Geek History Lesson. I'm Ashley Victoria Robinson. And I am Jason Justice Inman. Welcome (laughs) to your Mind University. The joke works. Because we are Geek History Lesson and we are the podcast that teaches you one concept, construct, or team in pop culture history and we tell you about them and write about around an hour. That was a write about round way of saying that. You nailed it. Uh, but we are your professors. We're here to take you on a new journey. It's a new year. It's 2019 or it could be 2078 if you're listening to it in that year. Do you think that our um, RSS feed is going to last that long? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going, uh, I have ensured that such a thing will happen in my will. Great. Uh, <laughs> but uh, well, hello, future people. Hello, if you're listening to us in the current day. We are talking today about Young Justice, a DC Comics young team, I assume, that loves to do justice-y things, but young. Ashley, why are we talking about Young Justice? Well, we are talking about it because the uh, DC Universe... What's the DC app called? It's a DC Universe streaming (laughs) service. Um, Because DC Universe, finally, after what feels like 100,000 years, has given us the third season of the Young Justice television show. Called Outsiders. Aptly titled Young Justice colon The Outsiders. Uh, Ashley. Yes, Jason. I'm the internet. Oh, yes, Um, internet. Hello. Hello. Why didn't we do an episode called The Outsiders? Well, because they're not going to appear in Black Lightning for a couple more weeks yet. No. There you go. Worst show ever. Um, also, because I don't think anyone has requested The Outsiders. Oh, I, I think I've said on this podcast a couple of times, I would love to teach an Outsiders episode. Um, but we did have a bunch of requests for Young Justice. All right. Well, this seems uh, apropos that we're doing the Young Justice episode, uh, you know, right after the Young Justice show comes back. That's right. And our TAs for this lesson are John Barbary, Tyler Van Nosdal, Wayne Monix, and at Lumina Orcus. Pretty wait, wait. sure I nailed all of those. In case I'm listening to this episode in the far off year of 2078. What do you mean when you say TAs? Uh, TAs are our teaching assistants oh. uh, slash the people who send us a very kind message on social media or to our email address and ask that we cover this topic. Yes, they suggest this lesson and you can do the same. You want to suggest future topics like The Outsiders or mm-hmm. other things like that. You can do that at GHL Podcast on Twitter. You can also do that at geek hist- Facebook.com slash Geek History Lesson on Facebook. Also, however you choose to contact us, please only do it once. If you do it multiple times, I will take you off the list because it's annoying. <laughs> Please wow. only do it once. It does not bump you up in the algorithm. It doesn't bump up the episode's chance of happening. Um, just do it once as respectfully as possible. Or check in a co- you know once a year. That's Ash- fine. Ashley ain't got no time for you people in 2019. There's like three people <laughs> who every single yes. week. We should, we should, we should stress <laughs> and that. we appreciate people's enthusiasm. Oh, yeah. We but really multiple, do. Multiple emails do not like bump something up the list. They don't. In fact, it, it detracts us from doing our <laughs> Actually, research. It actually lowers it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, and so I'm spiteful, and I'll take you off the all list. All right, cool. So let's uh, let's 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 get into this. We have so many TAs. Yes, uh, we do. We're in a brand new year. We have a brand new. I, I feel young, like the Young Justice. Actually, I feel I'm ex- tired. I'm ex- oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm excited about this. Maybe you've been your clone vet too long. That's a Superboy joke. Let's move into the Ten Cent Origin, <laughs> where Ashley is going to give you the quick Cliff Notes version of Young Justice. So that way in case you go to a DC Universe streaming cocktail party that's a cool cocktail party and people ask you hey yo what's this Young Justice about you are you can tell them you can prove yourself impressive and in the year of 2078 where the cockroaches live this will ensure that they do not eat you if you know this information they definitely do live there Uh, as you may have surmised Young Justice is a DC Comics superhero team it was created by Todd Nock Larry Stucker and Todd DeZago double Todd's on the creative team this week and Peter David uh, doesn't get created credit. Oh, really? He wrote, because he did not write. Todd DeZago wrote the first mini series. Peter David wrote the first ongoing. My bad. Series. My bad. He to That's me okay. to me he is the comic book father. I of, would I could say he wrote the definitive Young Justice oh, run. Well, true, true, true. Um, uh, you have uh, you have taught me something I did not know. Thank you. There you go. We're like five minutes in. I apologize. And you are, no, 
please. I thought, yeah, I really thought it was Peter Green. <laughs> I know. <laughs> um, he probably gets creator credits on a lot of the characters that show up later in the run, You're probably um, which might that. have been what you, yeah. well, well, you got a little mixed up. It's all good. Their first appearance was in Young Justice The Secret, number one, from June of 1998. And some of their team members include Robin, Superboy, Impulse, and Wonder Girl. Their base of operations is Happy Harbor. More on that later. And they were adapted into a popular animated show in 2010 that is currently enjoying its third season. Mm -hmm. And they will be included as part of Brian Michael Bendis' upcoming Wonder Comics imprint, which is their first major reboot which since they were created. Which at the time of this recording has not has been, not been released. published. Yes. yes. But I did want to mention that um, in case people aren't familiar with Young Justice and they really like this episode or they're looking for more things to look forward to, check out Wonder Comics when that drops. But that's an interesting thing to think about. They've only been around for about 10 years, mm -hmm. and they've only really had two series with the new one and the past one. Yes, there yeah. are a couple. They show up in a couple mini series. They cross over in a couple of events. Yeah, but um, no, nothing huge. They're no Teen Titans, more on Yeah, head. Yeah, they are no <laughs> Teen Titans, even though they're very much dressed up as a Teen Titans team. Mm -hmm. But uh, I don't. are you going to go into any a lot of the publication history and stuff like that? Um, not a lot of it, but we are going to talk about what Great. you and I talked about right before the show that started. I will, that I will say. <laughs> All right, let's get a move in to the meet cute. What's that? The meet cute is a term that we stole from romantic comedies where we talk about where we first meeted and cuted the young justice. Ashley, mm -hmm. Um, where did you first meet Young Justice? Because I know you like Young Justice a lot. Yes. I, in fact, just very recently bought you a gift of Young Justice Book 2, the new releases that they're doing. That That's was a gift true. I gave you. Um, where did you first meet Young Justice? I... Literally had no idea that Young Justice existed until the television show started. What? Um, as people know, I'm a, a diehard Teen Titans fan. Also, hot take, I think the first season of Young Justice is mostly bad. Um, it gets good towards the end. It does get good toward the end, but it takes a freaking minute to get it, there. It does. It does. Um, I was just not familiar with this series and this branding for the sidekick team, yeah. basically. Um, so when the show started in 2010, I was able, through the powers of the internet, because the books were out of print at the time, um, to go back and read the original series, which I also reread in public uh, preparation for this podcast. So... Not not a very impressive meet cute, but a true one. So, Jason, what is your meet cute for Young Justice? Oh, Ashley, let me tell you. Is Wizard Magazine involved? Yes. Oh, the fable. Start doing 19 outright. The fabled tomes of the Wizard Magazine that is an ancient comic book publication that uh, was great. And basically told you about everything of comic books. I've said many times in this podcast, Wizard Magazine was the way that I kept in touch with comic books. Because where I grew up, there were no comic book shops. So... I can remember flipping through Wizard Magazine, and I do not know whether the art was Todd the Nut or Humberto Ramos, mm -hmm. who did some of the early covers, but there was a white page ad with their giant Young Justice logo, and that logo, the Young Justice logo comic book logo is great. You can also kind of tell who the artist is. I know this picture's in your brain right yeah. now, based on how big Impulse's hair is. That's how I tell I the difference. I don't know. Okay. I don't know. Um, <laughs> But it's Robin, Superboy, and Impulse, like, kind of coming at the camera, mm -hmm. and it just says Young Justice. And I remember, like, I don't know what the tagline is, but the tagline says something like, this ain't your daddy's Justice League or something like that. I think Connor says that. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, um, and I, I just remember seeing that and being like, that's cool. Mm -hmm. um, because, again, the art brought me in. And I, it's funny, um... I didn't read Young Justice as it was coming out um, because I could never find it. Mm -hmm. But, and they never collected it in trades. They haven't collected, started collecting it until recently. They, and I think that's due to the show. But I read all of Young Justice. I own it all digitally because about, I'd say six or seven years ago, Comixology did a 99 cent sale on the entire series and I bought every issue. Nice. <laughs> so uh, I spent uh, probably over $60 on Young Justice comics and bought the entire series and I was like, I'm finally going to read this and I enjoyed it. You think it was worth $60? Did you get $60 worth of joy out of it? Yes, I do. There you go. Yes, I do. I, uh, I like Young Justice because there's something about the late 90s. It's a very fertile period for ideas for DC. I think Young Justice is arguably a much better name than Teen Titans. 100 but I think in the universe, I think Teen Titans uh, is valuable. I think that name carries a lot of weight. I agree with you. But Young Justice sounds cooler. It, yeah. it really does, well, which is why it was a great name for a cartoon show. And this might be a great segue for your uh, History 101, the Let's section of the podcast where Professor Ashley is going to give us the main meat of the lessons and all the TAs are... Uh, 
mandatorily and lawfully required to give her coffee. Oh, please do. Every five minutes. <laughs> uh, so if you miss it, uh, you're late. So um, I know for a fact, and you can tell me wrong, that in the late 90s, when this came out, 98, mm-hmm. JLA, the Justice League title that was started by Grant Morrison, but at this point I think was being written by Joe Kelly, was still like DC's and one of DC's like best-selling titles. Yep. And I think they made Young Justice simply as kind of a spinoff. And the reason why they called the Young Justice was to tie into Justice League. And I think that's the reason why they didn't call it Teen Titans was because the previous Teen Titans series was canceled. Yes. And there so there was no Teen Titans title at this time. It had recently been canceled. Um, there was a Titans team that was made up of like the Dick Grayson, Donna Troy generation yes. of heroes. They were all becoming adults, graduating into new identities and sort of leaving the Titans behind. That's kind of a good series too. Judd Winnick wrote that. It is a really yeah, good yeah. series. I think we've mentioned it on many episodes. Uh, also, there's a great uh, JLA slash Titans uh, one shot that was drawn by Phil Jimenez, which is beautiful. Is that the Devin Grayson one? I think the so. The Tectus Imperative? I think so, yeah. That's a great yep, book really that good. is out of print. Get it online. Because it launches that Titan yes, series. Yes, it does. Yeah. And then um, these all happen around the same... I think Titans and Young Justice kind of launch around the same time. The, look, the 90s yeah. was truly a golden age of comic that also produced a lot of garbage. Mm-hmm. Um, Young Justice was the first... First title used to introduce a new generation of legacy characters to teamwork. So we got a new Robin, Tim Drake. We got the new Superboy, Connell, and we got Impulse, Bart Allen, all of whom would go on to join the Jeff Johns incarnation of Teen Titans that I spoke about extensively in our two-part Teen Titans lesson. But this was the first time that that generation of heroes yeah. got to be on a team and like be on their own and be a little bit independent. Um and then it's also the team that's going to spin directly towards the end of the lesson into the Titans Young Justice Graduation Day mini series, which is where both of those titles come to an end. And then they're completely rebooted as Teen Titans and Outsiders. That's right. Mm-hmm. Uh, speaking of the Outsiders, indeed. Uh, Young Justice debuted. OK, now we're into the fictional comic book history. Yes. And not now, just not our blabbering at home. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, Young Justice debuted as a trio in Young Justice, the secret, like I mentioned in the Tencent origin, uh, where the boys freed a young female metahuman named Secret yeah. from the D.E.O. Department of Extra Normal op- Operations. Mm-hmm. Um, if you're not watching Supergirl and don't know who the D.E.O. is, they're kind of like the secret government or- organization that cleans up the messes or deals with with metahuman and super heroic threats. Um, fun fact, in the new collection, the modern collection at the time of this recording of Young Justice Volume 1, this is actually printed as the fourth story in the book, but that's fine. After this one shot, Young Justice rebanded for a mini series in Justice League in the main title, subtitled A World Without Grown Ups. Um, where kind of like in that Twilight Zone episode, there's a young boy who is given the powers of a god to create whatever he wants. So he elects to create one Earth for the kids and one Earth for the adults because we all actually think Home Alone would be a fun time when in fact it would have been a harrowing, awful experience and we all would have sat alone in a corner and cried. Uh, another fun fact, the villain of the storyline, the young boy slash the god who is possessing him, It's called Bedlam. And if you did watch the debut episode of Young Justice, The Outsiders, that name should sound familiar to you. Spoilers! Even though the show has just lifted the name and none of that original storyline, I really... Which happens a lot of times. It does. I just thought that was a fun detail. And uh, since it's timely to when this episode's coming out, I did want to mention it. It's a nice little wink back to the original comic. It is. To all of us who did our homework before we showed up to the DC streaming service. Which is what you should all do. (laughs) Truly. (laughs) Not just Jason and I. Uh, It's during this storyline that Young Justice rediscovers Happy Harbor, a.k.a. Mount Justice, a.k.a. the Secret Sanctuary, and the former headquarters of both the Justice League and the original Teen Titans. And when I say original, I mean like the very first 1960s incarnation of the team original, not the, the JLA, new Teen Titans. The JLA year one original team, which and at this time in continuity was Hal Jordan, Green Lantern, Aquaman, Black Canary, mm-hmm. Flash, and Martian Manhunter. They, and when they walk in there, the boys, they see that mm-hmm. painting. And yep. I was like, yeah. Yeah, because at this time in the continuity, Batman, Superman, Wonder Woman were not part of the original Just League. Mm-hmm. I kind of love that. I do, too. I'm not going to lie. I think that they're so solo that they should join later. Mm-hmm. A couple of months later, in September of 1998, Young Justice gets its own ongoing series because people like this little miniseries so much. 
They move into Happy Harbor, claim it as their own. They ask nobody permission. They just decide they're going to be there. And like Bart, teenagers. Bart graffitis, Hanson socks all over the place. There's like this ongoing joke in um, Young Justice that Hanson socks, which is really funny. And then the two DEO agents who we'll talk about in a minute who are sort of always chasing them are like, I like Hanson. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Um so they move in there. They discover that Red Tornado is sleeping in the back of the cave, hanging out there, and that he's kind of been spying on them and pretending to hibernate. And while he thinks they are super annoying, he is willing to use his expertise and act as their mentor, which is kind of nice. Uh, Jason, I want to ask you, do you think returning to Happy Harbor is an interesting throwback? Was it a smart idea for Young Justice instead of creating Young Justice Tower or an original space for them? No, because I think I always wonder that every time the Teen Titans start when they build a tower, like who the hell builds a tower? Where, where does that money come from? Because Wayne Enterprises. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, there's I mean, we know Wayne is a billionaire, but that's an easy that's a convenient yeah, it choice. Is. Mm-hmm. But also what city would say yes to that tower? I don't think any city on Earth. Well, New York City and San Francisco for well, two. <laughs> in the DC universe, I don't. I don't think realistically now any city would say yes to any superhero hideout because they know it's going to be blown up. Yeah. So I like the idea that they're going back to Happy Harbor because again, at the time of the '90s, Happy Harbor was a little lame, and you were just like, really, guys, like a cave in Rhode Island or Maine? Excuse me, a cave in Maine? That's your headquarters in Happy Harbor. So I kind of like that their first team. They were like, we're going to take this old headquarters and and make it work so I really appreciate that actually I think it's a good call I would have actually liked to see them move into the Detroit headquarters that the Just League abandoned as oh, well oh really yeah, yeah oh that'd be interesting yeah um, the also, garage that Aquaman had his team out of that would also feel um, <laughs> for our for our modern world it would feel like very forward thinking do bring yep. back Justice League Detroit tweet mm-hmm. at DC Comics and tell them that that's what you want to see they just released an omnibus of it actually uh, real? oh Aquaman no of Justice League Detroit no because Aquaman is in it Oh, you think? I do think. I don't know. Um, So as you can probably imagine, uh, Red Tornado becomes their mentor, facilitates their superhero training. Um, You can probably imagine this because the Young Justice show lifted this directly. We should probably, just in case, because I don't think we've ever done an episode, we should probably explain who Red Tornado is. Jason, who's Red Tornado? Well, Red Tornado (laughs) is a android that was built by Professor Ivo. Mm -hmm. He's a brother to Amazo. And he is a super powered android uh, with no feelings that can create tornadoes with his hands and his legs. His design is amazing. And um, do you know the human brain scan he's based on? Oh, no. Dr. Uh, T. O. Morrow. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Uh, okay, so he's based and on that. And kind of like vision. He was built by Ivo. Am I, am I getting it wrong? I is he built by... Uh, let me do some quick Googling. Because Professor Ivo and Professor T. O. Morrow are very similar. I know um, Ivo builds a Mazo. Yes, um, maybe they work together. But I know his brain scan is is Thomas yeah. Morrow's because uh, like Vision, every once in a while, he kind of has flashes back where yes. he... Uh, it doesn't matter. Anyways, uh, do, 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 Red do. Tornado is a fantastic Justice League Created member. by supervillain T.O. Morrow and the Tornado tornado champion of Earth-1 planet Ron. Okay, so... Was, I, that's his original incarnation. Um, okay, so there T.O. There are Morrow. versions where he has been created by Ivo. So okay, well, okay. Go. So I'm getting... Those two scientists are very similar to me, but I'm sorry, I apologize. But yeah, he's affectionately known to the Justice League as Reddy. Yeah. Uh, I really like that. And I love his voice in the Junk Justice cartoon where how he is down here... We must go. Like, I love that because that's how I think he is. I, he's very similar. I do think he's a copy of the Vision. I really do. Look, it um, wouldn't be the first time somebody at one of the big two copied somebody else. Yes, exactly. I, I, and, and the 70s, I like Red Tornado. Yeah, and in the 70s, that was rampant. Like, they copied each other left and right. Like, you know, Thanos is a copy yeah, of Yeah, you're Darkseid. welcome for Thanos. Um, <laughs> so, I, I, he is a copy of Vision, but, like, I like him a lot. Mm-hmm. And uh, he actually is one of the best things about Brad Meltzer's Just League run. So mm-hmm. him being the mentor of Young Justice, I think is perfection. Um, four issues in, DC Comics and or the creative team realized that Young Justice was a real sausage fest, so they introduced three young female superheroes as an answer to their founding trio. Jason, do you know who the first three me- female members of Young Justice are? Uh, Ashley, this is the internet again. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't need to hear you say the term sausage fest in a derogatory, t- you know, way. I don't know if it can be anything but a derogatory <laughs> it is, term. It is. I just thought I would bring that up. Uh, uh, let me see. Um, oh, let's see. I bet I you're going to get two of them. Yeah, yeah, because they're pretty. Oh, God. All right. It's. 
Cassie is one of them. Yeah, a.k.a. Wonder Girl. Cassie Sandsmark, is that yep. how you say last name? Wonder Girl, yeah. Uh, it's the secret. Yes. And then is the third one... Arrowette. Yes, it is. Okay, yes. Do you know Arrowette's real name? They rename her Artemis. They give her a completely fake name, identity, and backstory in the cartoon. Do you know her comic book name? uh, I don't, but I will say this. Artemis is a better name than Arrowette. I'm sorry. Um, I disagree. I think Arrowette is a... I don't like Artemis because the character's name is Artemis. Yeah. It's like the Ray. It is not a secret identity. Oh, well, oh, well I... Like her human name is Artemis, I get that. I get whatever that. her but last But I'm saying is. like her superhero identity should have been Artemis because that's a much better superhero name. But I her, disagree. Yeah, but her real name <laughs> should have been something else. Um, now, they, I they, love they, the name Arrowette. They created her because at the time, this is the... This is 98. This is the year before... Kevin Smith's quiver where he introduces Mia. Mia, yeah. Uh, who becomes Speedy. Yes. Um, Arrowette's... So Arrowette is a legacy character. Her mother... They, her, yeah, they retcon her this. Her yeah. mother is the original Arrowette. Ah, okay. So her name is Sissy King Jones. Mm-hmm. I like Arrowette as a character. It's I think she's great. A ter- Sissy is a terrible name. Sorry, Sissy Spacek. I think you're wonderful. I'm going to say this too because uh, in case we move on and we forget about her. Okay. I am... Sad that the secret. Oh no, she's a big part of this lesson. No, 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 no. That the secret. Oh, okay, good. But I'm going to say this right now. I'm laying down the law, okay. especially in 2078 or 2087. <laughs> um, <laughs> for all our future listeners, um, the secret is one of the best younger DC female characters that have been made in the last 20 years, and I am mad. That she is not in the current DC universe. I'm also mad that she's not in the animated show. Well, she is, but that she disappears. Mm-hmm. Um, but they do the same thing in Young Justice. Like the fact that uh-huh. the secret is not a member of like Damien's Justice League Dark? Teen Titans oh, team sure. right now is ridiculous. Uh, she's also, as we'll get into, one of the most powerful. Yeah. Um, but she's just so cool. She is so cool. She's now, their Martian Manhunter character, the, I, mis- the mystery. If I could lobby a criticism at her, if I was going to reboot her, I would make her not another blonde girl. Well, sure. Young Justice is full of young blonde women. And look, um, hey, our young blonde women listeners, too. you're great. There's more than just you. Young Justice? Mm. Full of a lot of whiteies. Full of, absolutely. <laughs> uh, which is yeah. something that I think yeah. the TV show does a great job at. They fold in a lot of the milestone yeah. characters. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, but I get I I love the secret and yeah. I and I kind of think I hate that she's been just sort of forgotten and brushed under well because then uh, New Fifty Two happened and we cherry picked who we cared about well yeah but even before then she was forgotten yes uh, right after the series ends in fact yeah basically <laughs> she literally never she comes really back. only has the series yeah. yeah. As with every team of young superheroes and legacy characters, Robin is the de facto leader because, duh, Tim initially refuses to reveal his secret identity to his fellow members of Young Justice and believes that they ought to keep their identity secret. I love this. It's such a Tim thing to do. It's never going to work. It fails pretty spectacularly because Wonder Girl and Arrowette bond pretty quickly and become fast friends, kind of in a nod to Raven and Starfire's bond. So I really enjoyed that. Doesn't Impulse just pull his mask off? Well, yes, because um, (laughs) I I have a little soapbox moment later about Bart. Okay. Um, But they really, he does it because Bart's like, this is ridiculous. I'm from the future. I know who you all are. And they use this as Young Justice likes to make the punchline, Bart Allen is stupid. Mm -hmm. And he's not. Um, But yes, he does eventually just pull his mask off. And he's like, this is dumb. Yeah. Uh, Later on, Wonder Girl develops feelings for Superboy in not the most original idea for these particular characters. But in spite of that, I actually really like the idea of them as a couple. It's carried over into the next incarnation of Teen Titans, although it does ultimately fall apart. And Jason, I wanted to ask you, yes. who's a better couple, Cassie and Connor or McGann and Connor? Well, McGann doesn't show up until quite a ways down the road. Yeah, but McGann and Connor be- are the big couple of the Young Justice animated show. It's it's, it's Cassie. Mm-hmm. It's Cassie and Connor. I agree I mean, with that. <laughs> McGann and Connor... McGann isn't introduced until Teen Titans. Until, until when Cyborg goes to sleep for a year. It's Yeah, and not until almost issue 50 of Teen Titans. Yeah. Uh, so, I don't know. Um, I, I'll, t- I'll tell you this. I like McGann in the comic books way more than I like her in the Young Justice show. Me too. Although I like her haircut in the show. Um... And yeah, that, that's true. But um, no, it's Cassie and Connor. Definitely Cassie and Connor. It's the only Superman Wonder Woman relationship that I'll allow. 
Interesting. Interesting. You have those comic books. Mm-hmm. <laughs> there is what the Superman Wonder Woman. Yeah, yeah, I do yeah. because the first arc is good. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> uh, there is a lot of interpersonal conflict that also arises around Impulse's character. Oh, this is my Impulse soapbox. Okay. Oh, here you go. Get, um, wait, wait, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. <clears throat> All right. All right, step up. Thank you. Yeah, there you go. That's a good follow. I think it's really mean. He's treated as stupid and he's not. And the rest of Young Justice quickly deem him untrustworthy. This is not something that gets revolved until the 2016 Titan series when he finally transcends into being Kid Flash. He's a super useful member of the team and also funny. Why does that mean he has to be stupid? Even Red Tornado's mean to him. I don't understand. There, I'm getting So what down. was the point of your soapbox? Of my soapbox. Um, that, that they, they treat him very stupid? They treat him like he's stupid okay. and... Um, a lot of the initial interpersonal conflict, and, and you and I have spoken about this previously, you read Young Justice because you want to see these characters talking to each other. That's this, basically it. It's the same case that you make yeah. about why we enjoy the crossover events. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, we don't care who they're fighting or, or we don't, we don't, we don't care what happened in the world. We just want to see Batman talk to Superman. That's all we're looking for. But also with teen characters in particular, yeah. you have always an extra layer of drama of who likes who, who's mad at who. There's a, you, you get a lot more personality problems. Mm-hmm. And in the first arc of Young Justice, all of the personality problems that aren't, I want to be the leader and Tim is the leader, which is pretty much just Connor's arc, um, are, I think Impulse is, is stupid and I'm mad at him. And that bothers me. And it bothers me that, it, to me, it's a lazy device that they lean on for like 25 issues. Oh, okay. And I really like Bart Allen. Uh, he's my favorite speedster, so I, I, will, I just don't think it's fair. I will, as a devil's advocate, just because I don't know Peter David and I don't know how he's writing the series, sure. I will say that in a team book, especially especially a team comic book where your page space is very limited, mm-hmm. you kind of have to like boil every character down to a single kind of archetype. I understand. They I can't take your really point. Be, you know, so if Robin is Batman mm-hmm. and Superboy is the ass, which he really is in this oh, he's series. such a jerk. Then Bart's only role is to be the dummy. But he's not dumb. That's the thing. Yes. Bart is but, innocent but and will, naive, but, but he's say, not dumb. Sure. I, and I agree with that. But if you've read Mark Wade's Flash run up into this point, Bart is is not trustworthy. He he is he does bl- he he jumps before he thinks. Absolutely, that's yes. the reason yeah. why he comes off as dumb. Mm-hmm. Um, and I understand, and he's the youngest. I think so. Of just all. devil's advocate. I, I agree with you. I kind of agree. Makes me mad. It, it gets annoying. I could see, especially since you're an impulse fan, and you were like, I don't want to read 20 issues of this book telling me the character's stupid. Yeah, that's all. I'm just gonna scream about the characters I like. Strap in. Uh, tone shift. As much as I love Young Justice, um, I do want to address some of the problematic story choices by contemporary standards. Hold because... on a second. I got a soapbox for you. Hold okay, on. Thank there you. It is. Here it is. Get on top of it. Okay. I'm on top. All right, there you go. Okay. So one of the earliest villains before the girls are introduced at the boys fight is an archaeologist named Nina Dowd or N. Dowd. Okay. Nothing wrong with that. Who discovers something... <laughs> Uh, mystical, she touches it and it makes her boobs so big she gets angry and can't stand up and then she gets a special logo that says the mighty endowed it's gross it's unfortunate it's unnecessary, I don't care that these are 14 and 15 year old boys Um, I'm disappointed with everyone involved in this storyline now, to its credit, Young Justice transcends dumb jokes like this but I don't, we call out on this podcast, um, things that we're maybe not as invested in. So I wanted to be equal opportunity and be like, Young Justice does not get a pass for the things that it does that are problematic. Well, Ashley, I want to uh, just devil's advocate there because Endowed, I think, uh, has some valuable stuff to... Uh, Show me your receipts. <laughs> that is, and this point, and, uh, you know, this... You know, I think this, but you know, I I think I've made my point. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, you're just Twitter persona. No, I don't. You you are correct. I, I to be honest with you, I completely had forgotten about that character. Yeah. But like to name a character in doubt, it's bad. It's important. Is a little much. And she's the first villain. Other than Bedlam, okay. she's the first villain they fight. She's yep. the first female villain. When they it's fight. just the three boys. Yeah. Before the girls get introduced. Yeah, that's a little much, guys. I um, mean, I get it was the '90s and comic books, but come on. But come on, and this is ostensibly like an all ages book. Well, see, or at I, least like a teen book. Well, it's funny. It's the, the problem is, is that like the joke of the idea is, is that like if this character touches something mystical and like say she gets bigger, of course that would give her bigger breasts. But 
it's the thing but of the it's name. It's not proportional. It's the name. Yeah. It's it, if it was just that. Mm-hmm. If she had just gotten bigger, and then yeah. and then maybe there was a, a a boob joke of some type. Sure. If, then we would probably give it a if pass. If she was effectively rampage, yes, I would have been fine with but, it. But but the fact of it's the name yeah. is where it's like oh the meta. And then um because she's so top heavy, she falls over, and then Connor stands like Captain Morgan with his foot on her butt. Oh, it's gross. That's that's too far. It's a little gross. Okay, um, I retract my statements. That's of, okay, and. In this one. <laughs> I also bring this up because this is the issue that introduces the super cycle and the super cycle is so important yeah. that it kind of sucks that it shows up in this really like un good well, unflattering you know, issue. I'll say this about Peter David. For every issue that he writes spectacularly and, and, he, and we, he's a we great are writer. Peter David fans. Yeah, I like Peter David. Yeah. I love his Spider Man twenty nine run. His run on Supergirl. X Factor is great, his Supergirl mm-hmm. run is great. He, Aquaman, the his, best Aquaman run, <laughs> his best Aquaman ever, and Incredible Hulk. He has a great Incredible Hulk run. Uh, he does have some really big whiffs as well, and but I think he only gets to the really good stuff because he takes it. You know, I don't know. That's okay. You either love his stuff or you hate his stuff. Yeah, and, and like I said, I'm I'm not here to like take anyone down, but I just think it's fair to speak critically and positively about yeah. the things we like and don't like. Um, you might know the super cycle from the show. It is a psychic flying motorbike from New Genesis that imprints on the Young Justice trio. Jason, really quick, what's New Genesis? Uh, New Genesis is one of two planets that exist outside the multiverse that are in an eternal war with Apocalypse, the home of Darkseid, created by the King, Jack Kirby. Yeah, if you didn't think that we were getting fourth world stuff, Oh, you better hold on to your butts. Mm-hmm. There's so much fourth world coming. For most of Young Justice's early adventures, however, they are basically running away from two DEO agents named Fight and Mad. So when you abbreviate it, they call them Fight and Mad, which, like, that's cute. All right. Um, in an interview, Peter David, speaking of, admitted that he wanted to call them Nuck and Futs. But DC Editorial oh. would not let him. <laughs> okay, Peter David. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, uh, okay there, Mr. David. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, it is eventually revealed that Secret, remember her, got her powers yes. through experiments conducted on her by the DEO. Okay. So she takes the fight to them and actually ends up freeing the rest of the children who were being experimented on, um, including her brother, who becomes a superhero named Harm, who's then killed by her dad, um, and ultimately sets them all free. Then Arrowette's first impactful arc comes around the same time when a friend of hers from high school is murdered and she nearly kills the murderer as an act of revenge. Now, Young Justice was already on a pretty close watch by the U.S. government. I mentioned there were these two DEO agents chasing after them because they had, in the Halloween issue, helped Red Tornado kidnap his adopted daughter, a girl named Treya, who I've never heard of before this yeah, series. Uh, she has a, yeah, she's great. Uh, um, yeah, Reddy is married and has family. Um, in Well, now he's divorced. Oh, uh, well, he gets married again. Yes. Um, in an attempt to gain custody of her, and so... They're mad at them for stealing this girl, and then Arrowette mur- almost murders this guy, and that kind of pushes them under even more close scrutiny. Then, when Young Justice is rescuing Secret and everybody else because that she's freeing from the DEO, they accidentally deface Mount Rushmore, and the government and the Justice League take steps towards disbanding, quote, underage crime fighters, unquote, which is so ironic because Batman is a big part of this arc. Yep. Um, since he they, has like 18 underage agents. <laughs> just like living in his cave. Yep. Um, since you go in that corner. You go over there. And eat rats. You're going yeah, to eat rats. I'll give you some white bread. That's all you get. <laughs> you can make a sandwich. <laughs> Alfred's making tea. Um, because Who they, would like a cucumber sandwich? Oh, man. Me. Ashley would. Um, because Quiet, they, you. <laughs> they can't be trusted. All for number three. Team? Responsible decisions. <laughs> I am actually legally considered an orphan, so you hit too close to home. <laughs> um, this leads to the creation. So, as a response to all these kids running around, yep. the larger powers in the DC universe go, let's make a team of golden age sidekicks of old people called Old Justice. I'm not kidding. It's kind of dumb. It's funny. Because there's some great art. I will share it on our social media the day the episode drops. So go and look I for that. I remember like old men in these costumes. Yes. Is that, are they correct? Um, okay. And I'm also only really mentioning it because it's going to become a plot point later. But just know that this team happened um, and then it went away pretty quickly. Arrowette winds up feeling really bad about losing control, of course. And about the heat that she brought down on her teammates, so she retires for about five seconds. Simultaneously, Superboy is kidnapped and replaced by an evil twin known as Match. 
by a group of baddies known as the Agenda. The Agenda is led by Contessa Erica Alexandra Del Portenzo. Jason, do you know who that is? Is she the Contessa? Yes. Well, that's all I know her as. Uh, oh, she, doesn't she eventually marry Lex Luthor? She is at this time the former wife of Lex yeah, Luthor. Yeah, she marries Lex Luthor, and they have a daughter together who actually turns mm-hmm. into a brainiac. Yes, um, mm-hmm. who, much like Lex, uh, hates superheroes and is on a crusade to discredit them all. I didn't know if you were. I, I was like, I thought you were like maybe asking if she had another or uh, name. Oh uh, uh, no, that's and I was okay. like, I've only known her as the Contessa. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. Is, is, is we she got there in the end? Is she like long haired? Like what's <laughs> <laughs> what's the what's the Peter she David that name for that? From Tangled. Yeah. <laughs> um, but before we move on to the next miniseries, Jason is going to tell you what you can use and put them on your eyeballs in order to read that miniseries and learn even more about Young Justice. Yeah, we got to talk about our sponsor for today, and that is Simple Contacts because. Simple Contacts, guys, is a convenient way to renew your contacts lens prescription and reorder your brand of contacts from anywhere in minutes. Now, I use Simple Contacts. I'm not lying there. Actually, before the Christmas break, I needed to uh, you know, get some more contacts. I went into the app because I had done their simple and easy eye test, which you can take. It takes less than five minutes. Basically, they give you a chart. You look at a video. You say the things. An eye doctor checks it out. They give you the thumbs up. And if they give you the thumbs up, you can keep ordering contacts from them for the rest of the year. So, uh, you know, just to let you know, it's also like the vision test is only like $20. What? It's very simple. And their contacts are Easily, easily priced, and it's really cool. But just make sure that, you guys, this is not a replacement for a periodic full eye exam. They want to make sure that you go to your eye doctor every single year, even though you're going to use Simple Contacts to make great purchases on some easy contact replacements. Because I don't know if you know, I wear contacts, I do, and I use Simple Contacts to buy them. Geek History Lesson listeners can get $20 off by going to simplecontacts.com slash geekhistory20 and using the promo code geekhistory20. Just enter that code at checkout. Give it a try. We think you'll thank us later. And thank you to Simple Contacts for sponsoring this episode. So the next mini series that they appear in is called Sins of the Youth. The agenda is back. They employ Clary and the Witch Boy, yay, to either age all members of Young Justice into adulthood or to de-age them into their childhood, kind of depending, I think, on what the artist wanted to draw. While all the heroes in the DCU are searching for ways to reverse the weird aging magic, the more senior heroes come to see the value of their younger counterparts, and they decide, basically in the span of three issues, that Young Justice can stay together. This event is a little bit more important because Tana Moon... Jason, do you know who that is? That is uh, Connor's girlfriend from Hawaii. That's right. And she first appeared in Reign of the Superman. Yep. It was basically the main thing I could find about her in my research. She's uh, also a character of his solo series written by uh, Carl Kessel. There you go. Um, She's really cute. Uh, Well, she dies. She's murdered at the hands of the agenda, and Connor somehow gets even more mad than he was before. What? She gets murdered? young. I don't remember that. Yeah. That sucks. She's awesome. She's probably going to be in the animated movie. Um, oh, that's probably mm-hmm. true. Um, that's cool. I'd be down for that. I don't know if you want a ton of moon episode. Please re- request no, it. No, we are not doing a ton of moon <laughs> I'm just, episode. I'm just saying, I don't know if she ever comes back to life. <laughs> no, I mean, she also is like such a minor character that there, if, if you want, I know, a, it's if you a want joke. a three minute, you can just Read her Wikipedia article. Yeah, go read her Wikipedia article. Um, yeah. The emotional strain of her loss takes away Connor's superpowers, but his aging, which had previously been suspended due to his time at Cadmus, um, becomes reinstalled and he kind of gets to grow up a little bit for the first time in really forever since he was introduced. He also takes a leave of absence for about five minutes from the team and Stargirl finally impresses Starman enough that he bequeaths her his cosmic rod at the same time, which is kind of a kind of a nice little moment. What is it? But Stargirl is not part of Young Justice. No, but that happens during the course of this event, and it's an important oh, DC okay. moment. So I just right. wanted to bring it up. That's all. Toward the end of this story, a new crop of characters finally do join Young Justice for the first time. This is the first time they have a little recruiting drive. Uh, and these team members include Empress, Lil Lobo. Um, Lobo is kind of in de aged. It's super dumb. Beast Boy, Flame Bird, who was Betty Kane at the time, Batgirl, Cassandra Kane, Captain Marvel Jr., and everyone's favorite, Lagoon Boy. Mm-hmm. 
Jason, you made a sound just now. Do you think these are good additions to Young Justice? No, I'll say this. Um, I hate Little Lobo. Uh huh. And he's called Lil. Lil Lobo, yeah. Little Lobo. I hate Little Lobo. Well, he's going to be a big part. Oh, I know. <laughs> I know. And to me, he almost ruins Young Justice. Yeah. But to uh, me, this is where Young Justice starts to get, fall apart. It borders on becoming yep. a complete mess for a little mm-hmm. while. Yeah. Because uh, Young Justice is part of this okay event in DC Comics history called Our Worlds at War. We're going to get to that really soon, yeah. And Little Lobo is the reason why that is so hard to read, Mm -hmm. is Little Lobo. Uh, I blame it on him. But Cassandra Cain, I'll tell you honestly, their best addition is Captain Marvel Jr. because Freddie Freeman is an amazing character. Underrated, in my opinion. Elvis' haircut. Young Justice then moves its headquarters for the first time out of Happy Harbor into a hotel in the Catskills for... No reason at all. They want comfort. This new version's first big adventure together is to act as bodyguards for Sissy, a.k.a. the former former Arrowette, when she qualifies for the 2000 Summer Olympic Games in Australia, which is pretty lucky because the evil fictional nation of Zandia, that's where Brother Blood is from, tries to interfere and cause an international incident. Jason, what medal does Sissy win? Uh, Silver? Gold. Because, Does she win gold? Yeah, because duh. Because All they right. actually reference it in the very first issue of uh, Jeff Johnson Titan series. I have no idea. Yeah. Uh, Don't remember that. Sorry. Then Young Justice goes to space. It's not a joke. Space. Uh, Doiby Dickles hits up the team. Jason, do you know who that is? No. Nope. He is a Golden Age sidekick to Alan Scott, who was an old man in the Golden Age. D O I B Y. How's he still alive? Who space? knows? Magic space. space? They're space still on magic? Earth right now. Uh, they owe him a solid because he was a member of Old Justice and stood up for them. Remember we talked about Old Justice? Oh, man. And uh, you're supposed to be kind to the elderly and help them across the street. At Doiby's request, Young Justice travels to his homeworld, Merg, to defend it from a bunch of space invaders. Instead of calling like the modern Green Lantern Corps or literally anyone else more qualified, they send Young Justice. Uh, Lil- well, the kids got to do something. Yeah. Lil Lobo had been fired from the team at the time, much to Robin's chagrin, though. They're not good at space. So they call him back onto the team to aid them because he knows a thing or two about operating in space. And he kind of never leaves, which is a real bummer. On their way back from Merg, because they've successfully protected it from the aliens, yep. Young Justice makes a little stop off at New Genesis, which Jason explained to us before. Uh, this is only really important because Darkseid becomes rather taken with Secret. They go to Apocalypse, I think you mean, not New Genesis. They go to New Genesis and then, then they he go to I remember them and it takes them to Apocalypse. I remember them going to Apocalypse. They I was, go to Apocalypse I was like, like two times. Yeah, or three I was like, Darkseid doesn't live on New Genesis. <laughs> Nobody goes there. I mean, he has a timeshare there, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and we're finally going to start to learn a little bit more about who Secret is, and eventually we'll learn her name. Young Justice shows up again in the 2001 event Our Worlds at War, where Imperiax and Brainiac 13 are trying to take over the world. They are drafted by the Justice League to act strictly as agents of rescue missions in order to keep the young superheroes from the brunt of the destruction that's actually, and danger. That's actually one of the cooler parts of the event because each of the books kind of got their own our worlds at war issue like that mm-hmm. this was a thing their issue is actually not bad well this was a Jeff Loeb storyline this this giant crossover of the Superman titles when him and Ed McGinnis were writing Superman and Imperiax is supposed to be this like kind of he's basically DC's Galactus mm-hmm. except he senses that there's something wrong in the universe so he's destroying planets to try to figure out what it is and in that issue, in the it's a our worlds at war, young justice because even Greenland they all they all got like one shots because mm-hmm. it, it crossed the entire DC universe. They I, they just yeah they made to where the young justice would just go out there in space and pick up the injured people and bring them back to the hospital ship. Yeah, which I was like that's a good like that's a good use for the young heroes and you're not benching them but they're still doing something very important. But they're not in the main fight. Yes, exactly. Now, all of this kind of happens after the events of JLA Tower of Babel. The main thing you need to know about that is Batman has a secret file on everyone and knows how to kill all the members of the Justice League. Most of the operating members of Young Justice have similar suspicions about Robin at this time. And so they're having a hard time following his leadership, which had led them pretty well up to this point. This causes problems when they're out in space and they crash land on Apocalypse again. God, weren't we just here? And find themselves stuck there while they're trying to rescue Steel from the Black Racer, who's yeah. basically the, the DC personification of death. Mm-hmm. Oh, the Grim um, Reaper. Sorry, right. Grim Reaper. 
DC, uh, DC, Superboy. <laughs> Superboy wants to take on more of a leadership role. Robin doesn't think so, but Superboy, Wonder Girl, Impulse, and Arrowette all tell Robin they don't trust him, so he's kind of got no choice. Secret and Empress are on Robin's side, and they defend him. Um, and then Lil Lobo refuses to believe that anybody could ever figure him out, so he's not worried. Um, ironically, not too much longer after this, Lil Lobo winds up attacked by parademons and killed by the Black Racer. Yay! Mm-hmm. He's also got this weird power where if he spills his blood, it springs up as clones and they come back and fight. And this will be important in just a second. Ultimately, the team puts these matters aside because they have to move past it and get away from all of the Jack Kirby craziness, mostly because everyone is dead um, or everyone except dead little Lobo is captured by Granny Goodness and tortured by her female furies. And that is no fun. Now, remember earlier when I mentioned that Darkseid and Secret had this like weird connection and he really liked her? Mm-hmm. This comes into play again in this very moment. It is revealed over the past arc leading up to this that Secret's powers are more than just kind of weird sand vapor powers. Um, she actually has a really close relationship to death and the afterlife, and she's been trying to investigate it ever since. Because he's an awesome mentor, Darkseid tells her that she's evil and can only be evil and that she should embrace her dark side. And yeah. he just goes full Darth Vader. He goes Vader full on joke. Yeah, in, embrace your dark side. In, in this moment. The rest of her teammates are freed by the aforementioned blood clones of Lil Lobo, who then each turn on each other and kill all of themselves, thankfully. Young Justice is able to take advantage of this chaos and make their way back to Earth, only to learn that the Imperix War is over. Hooray! While they were on Apocalypse, Impulse also used a bunch of clones of himself, kind of like Lobo, except his clones come from the Speed Force um, rather than like a teenage boy inspired blood ritual. While they are battling Darkseid's minions, several of his clones die and Bart kind of goes through that sensation. He takes that on and it's his first real brush with death and his mortality. Um, And if you are a Bart fan like myself, you can probably imagine that this really upset him. So upon returning to Earth, he immediately quits Young Justice and being a superhero for, again, like five minutes. On the heels of Impulse leaving the team, Robin also quits the team because he's hurt that nobody feels like they can trust him. Now, if you have to replace two of your founding Young Justice members, who would you call, Jason? Ghostbusters. (laughs) Nope. Uh, Instead, they called Snapper Carr to join them to replace Red Tornado. Okay, that no, that's actually a good choice because Snapper Carr is the first kind of Justice League sidekick. I'm not saying whether it was a good or a bad choice. I just think it's an unexpected choice. And then they also he built Happy Harbor. They also call the Ray. Oh, that's a good choice. Uh, I think so. Snapper Carr's biggest concern is helping the secret deal with um, her questions about her true nature and whether or not she's evil. So he sends her to see the specter Hal Jordan, who Snapper believes will be a good mentor for her. I don't know if I agree with this choice. Yep. Um, While I maintain it's not a great idea. Secret ultimately learns that she is a gatekeeper between the realm of the living and the dead. And in my opinion, this makes her so much more interesting than when she's first introduced and she's kind of just a sand monster. Uh, Fun fact, Secret never tells any other members of Young Justice about this ability or her true nature. Um, So I guess they should have been concerned about her secrets and not Robin's. But she does tell them her real name, which she finally uncovers, which is Greta Hayes. Cool. Um, these rolls directly. Oh, this rolls directly into the story arc called uh, World Without Young Justice in April of 2002, featuring the return of Bedlam. Remember that first villain yeah, we ever guy. fought yeah. that we loved so much slash completely Fan forgot favorite. about? favorite. Yes. Uh, This time, Bedlam recreates the world in his image, including a version of Young Justice that's basically just like giant butthole versions of the original characters. Ironically, Superboy, even more of a jerk than he was when we first met him. Because Superboy does have quite a nice character arc and actually becomes a palatable character, kind of ending the series and going into the Teen Titans series. He becomes a little more reserved. The team is able to take Bedlam down in the end by convincing Bart and Tim to rejoin the team and present a unified front because Young Justice, like most super teams, stronger together. Mm -hmm. Robin and Impulse elect to rejoin Young Justice full time and everyone votes on the leader this time around and they elect Wonder Girl. 
Uh, fun fact, up to this point in the series, in the grand tradition of DC Comics superheroes trying to hide their identities, Cassie had been wearing a black wig, like the and original glasses. Supergirl. Yep, and black canary and big Clark Kent glasses. Um, even when she's like out in the field a lot of the times. So when she is elected to lead Young Justice, she finally puts these two things down and like embraces her full power. I really, really love this moment. Uh, despite the fact that I maintain uh, Robin should always be in charge. Oh, yeah. And and then also by, by doing that, she puts another blonde girl on the team. <laughs> right. There are so many blonde girls on the Young Justice team. Um, Wonder Girl almost immediately has to recruit more members of the team in order to launch an attack on Zandia to rescue the Empress's kidnapped father. Jason, who do you think she recruits? I don't know. Uh, Dark side? <laughs> yeah, Dark side. She recruits uh, Star Girl. Jakeem, Yakim, Thunder, Jakeem, Thunder, uh, Kid Devil, and the Wonder Twins. There is actually a lot more recruits than this, but these are the only ones that actually do anything of, of impulse in the story. Yeah. Yes. Um, following their victory in Zandia, Secret comes to the forefront once again because her dark nature is emerging. Dun, dun, Fifty dun. issues later. Um, at the time, Young Justice has agreed to star in a reality television show because it's 2002. And it's called Secret, Real Justice. I don't remember what it's called. I'm oh, really sorry. It's been called Real Justice. I think it's probably just called The Young Justice R-E-E-L. Show. R-E-E-L. No, Real you're Justice. fired. Uh, and Secret learns that her father is going to be executed by the state. I mentioned earlier he killed her brother, this metahuman named Harm. So she pleads with Young Justice to help her break them out. They refuse. It would be bad publicity. They turn their back on Secret. So she goes goes ahead and breaks her father out of prison anyway and a big fight ensues. She takes this betrayal very personally and leaves Earth for Apocalypse and the guidance of Dark Seed. Since I just think it's so funny. Since her power is now in the hands of arguably the most evil character in the DC universe, Young Justice prepares to take her out. She basically goes around consuming souls of the innocent people at Dark Side's behest for a minute. Um, and then there's a big fight. They finally confront the secret and Robin tries to kind of throw himself on the blade by admitting that he was a bad friend. He was a bad leader. He failed secret in an attempt to get, you know, he's trying to get to her inner goodness Mm -hmm. and he's trying to pull out the good part of her that he thinks is still there. It works. Um, Secret breaks down with grief over her actions and Darkseid gets really mad. Mm -hmm. So he uses his Omega effect on her, which robs her of all her metahuman abilities and makes her normal, which he thinks is like this horrible thing he's done to her but it's kind of ironic because all she's ever wanted to do is be a normal girl so dark side gives her exactly what she wants to do you just know where be she ends up greta hayes um hang on okay sorry <laughs> so young justice ends their run as a team when they next appear in titans young justice graduation day the titans are attacked by indigo um, and then a dormant superman android inside star labs is activated and everybody fights um, it's a significant moment because it leads to the death of Lilith and Donna Troy, who don't return until uh, DC Rebirth relaunches their Titans team a decade later. No, Donna Troy returns in uh, Infinite Crisis, but it's at least... Oh, but that's when they join another Titans team. Sure, sure. But it's but it's 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 like two or three, four years. Yeah, it's a while. That's fair. Yeah, yeah. Um, the effects of their deaths basically destroy both teams. Um, Cassie sees the death of Donna in particular, who was her predecessor as Wonder Girl, as proof that Young Justice is ineffectual and she quits disbanding the team. Here's where everybody ends up. Yep. Uh, Wonder Girl, Robin, Superboy, and Impulse uh, get recruited by Cyborg, Starfire, and Beast Boy for the new Teen Titans like four years later. Ray joins the new Freedom Fighter, Snapper Card, joins Checkmate. Empress retires until the events of Infinite Crisis and Final Crisis where she can be seen as a member of the League of Titans. Arrowette retires. Red Tornado rejoins the Justice League. Lagoon Boy is recruited by Cyborg to fill out his new Titans East team. And Greta, formerly Secret, goes out into the world and lives a normal life. So we can assume she's still in the DC Universe, but she has no superpowers anymore. She is in the same DC Universe because you see her in Jeff Johns' Teen Titans run because she goes to the same private school as Cassie. That's right. It, and, and Arrowette goes there so, as well. So Arrowette and and Secret are both at that school and Cassie tries to join the school and at first... And the, they have to... And at first the school mm-hmm. is like, oh, we don't want a vigilante here and uh, Sissy... Because she's a gold medal winner, she goes, well, if she doesn't go here, I leave your school yes. and you play off my gold medal. I just mean that sure, sure. she hasn't been a part of like a super team. No, no, no. But I appreciate that like she's at the school with the girls. But I, I agree. Secret should come back. Uh, look, I think she'd be a great new Spectre. 
Nah, she needs to do the secret again. Great. Um, She's such a great... Again, it, there's something to be said in superhero universes. When you create a brand new, even female, or I'd even say minority character that sticks. Mm-hmm. Uh, and she's not she's not a minority, but she's a female character. But she works. Like, she is the Young Justice's raven. Yeah. And I yes. still, I think it's a tragedy. And now they're trying to do that with Lilith. Yeah, but I, uh, well, she would, Lilith existed like way before her secret, but. I know, but Lilith, uh, is, they're trying to make Lilith really important sure, now. And sure. we're like, oh, but, okay. But I think it's like, she's like, she's one of those characters where I'm just like, man, I, I, I'm kind of like, I hope Brian Michael Bendis brings her back or throws her in there, but I doubt he does, because I think a lot of people think that this is her story's over and to me I'm like mm-hmm. no 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 just say that like she has some of it left in her and it turns back on or, or something. like yeah. give her Pandora's box to open yeah. or like literally anything yeah any comic book nonsense that There's you need a bunch to make of comic happen. but she's, she's too good of a character to sit on the sidelines um, and like I mentioned until Wonder Comics there's no more Young Justice Adventures except when the heroes like happen to team up together so they were quote unofficial reunions unquote because like I don't know Bart and Robin are in the same place well but, yeah and then the, the Teen Titans team that happens right after Young Justice is basically Young Justice yeah, but it's called Teen Titans. Yes. Um, really quick, um, then the television show happened. Uh-huh. Um, the TV show is basically all of the characters that you were familiar with, plus Miss Martian, plus Kid Flash. Um, that's the first season. They go to Happy Harbor. They're mentored by Red Tornado. Well, we should talk about some distinctions there because the Robin is Dick Grayson. It is. It is. The, they're, they're the and first the Flash generation. And the Flash is Wally. Yes. Um, the second season brings in more of the second generation mm-hmm. characters. It brings in Tim. Bing and Cassie. It brings in... Uh, Connor is also part of the first season. Mm-hmm. Um, and they then age it, Connor up quite a bit. Yeah. I actually kind of prefer Connor as a young man as opposed to a teenager. Like, I do too. I like Connor better when he turns like 21. Well, here's the weird <laughs> thing. I think in my head... I to age these characters. I see them all when they're in Young Justice. They're thirteen mm-hmm. because they're all like I'm going to say it asses, and they're they're all buttholes. They're yeah. all buttholes, <laughs> and they're rambunctious. And I think when they're in the Teen Titans, they're sixteen. Mm-hmm. Like they're I could o- agree with they're that. They're a little bit older. They're a little bit taller, and they're more about the mm, who can I kiss. Mm-hmm. But like in Young, in not young, as much in Young yeah, Justice. In, in yeah. Young Justice, they're just like hey, Hanson sucks. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> totally. I'm smarter than you. I'm. Uh, here's a than fart you. bomb. Meh. You know, uh, there's probably a fart bomb. But season two of Young Justice really does a great job at folding in like a lot of diversity. Like yes. um, uh, Jaime Reyes, Blue Beetle gets included. Impulse finally shows um, up. Impulse finally shows up. Yep. Rocket is there. Hardware is Barbara there. Barbara Gordon, Batgirl shows um, up. They, 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 again, they blow out the world in a really interesting way. In season one, they fight the Light, which is like a secret organization, kind of like the agenda that we talked about mm-hmm. in the main episode. And instead of a Superboy clone, there's a, a Roy Harper clone. And so Roy gets his one arm by the well, end of the season. there still is a Superboy clone, but still. Right, but not. Yeah, but yeah, it, it get, serves the same yeah. narrative purpose. Yeah. And then season two is the Reach, which is the enemy of Jaime Reyes, Blue Beetle. Yes, they're space aliens. And then outsiders. Uh, right now, it seems like we're looking at a split in the team. I don't want to talk too much about the television show because there's honestly not that much of it. Nope. And go watch it. I don't want to do spoilers, but it is popular. It is important. It is worth mentioning. But we should mention that we are going to talk about the first three episodes uh, of Young Justice. On our Patreon, patreon.com slash Jawin, where if you want to go over there, you can support the site and you get lots of extra podcasts, including Geek Hush Lesson Extra, where we're going to talk about our thoughts about Young Justice Season 3. Yes. We also do movie commentaries this year because our patrons voted. They voted that we should do movie commentaries for what legendary hero, Ashley? All of the live action Superman movies. That's right. So this entire year, we will be doing live action commentaries, or not live action, but their uh, audio commentaries to the live action action Superman movies started with Superman the movie Christopher Reeve that can only be heard on our Patreon and all kinds of stuff like that every dollar over there helps support this podcast helps keep this podcast going Um, so we appreciate all of you and if you listen to this podcast if you enjoy this podcast there's a lot of benefits over there that we think you'll like there's a lot of cool stuff we're working on this brand new thing called Crisis Club you should go out check out Mm -hmm. that's happening over there and um, you know again the main podcast only happens because of the Patreon without the Patreon this podcast would not exist it couldn't uh and yeah that's that there in fact is a level on the patreon that says if we drop below this level geekish lesson goes away so every dollar really makes a difference and if you think that this episode is worth a quarter uh because all even one dollar helps like you'd get for every geekish lesson episode you'd get a quarter a quarter a quarter of your you know very much in the world you can buy for a quarter 
And I'll put this out there. If we get $100,000, we'll buy Wizard Magazine and bring it back. We would bring back the Wizard Magazine. We <laughs> so would do it. Head on over to the Patreon and make uh, that happen. Yeah, yeah hopefully. <laughs> but, uh, there you go. So uh, thank you so much for everybody that supports us. But go over there and listen. If you want to hear our thoughts on Young Justice, it's the It's truly cartoon, the only place you can find the them. the only place that we will do it. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, there you go. All right. Shall we roll into the recommended reading? Let's go into the recommended reading. Ashley, the recommended reading, in case you don't know, because I don't know if you've ever been on this podcast before. I haven't. Yes. Is where you go to <laughs> geekhistorylesson.com. Um, slash recommended reading and Professor Ashley is going to give you three choices for books you should read in case you want more Young Justice. You go over there, you click on the thing, it takes you to Amazon. Amazon brings that book right to your home and a small percentage of that purchase comes back to the Mind University and helps support us. Here's a nice thing. There's only three volumes of Young Justice. <laughs> so, <laughs> by Peter David. By Peter David. So get Young Justice volume one, two, and three. Yep, and they're all out. I think four is going to come out here in like five or six months. I, I think so. Um, I'll probably throw up the Blu-ray copies of the first two seasons of the show as yeah, well. Yeah, why not? Um, but just read the series, man. Like, it's it's one of the well, only series. It's the same as the TV series, shows. Like, just go watch the TV show. Absolutely. Yeah. Where you can get your hands on the, com- the completed Complete. story yeah. easily. These are not expensive. They're soft covers. They're very nice they soft covers. Um, so if you've enjoyed any part of this or you even like one of these characters, it is absolutely worth exploring. Uh, we own all of them that we can currently. I love them so much. Yes. yes. All right. I have one question for you in our discussion. Yes. The discussion part where we discuss things. So we know that Young Justice originally came out basically to fill the hole that the Teen Titans had left. Yep. We know that we are about to approach a time where we are going to get a Teen Titans book, a Titans book, and a Young Justice book. Yes. Is there a place for Young Justice in a DC universe with functioning Titans and Teen Titans teams? No. It's too much. Mm -hmm. Because it's the same corner of the DC universe. Now, the interesting thing, and this only exists because of DC continuity, the interesting thing about the new Young Justice book, which we have not read at the time of this recording. Absolutely not. So you could be listening to this in 2078, and you, you've you read the entire 300-issue series, and you know exactly what happens. God, I hope it runs for 300 issues. I hope we get to write it if it runs for um, 300 issues. <laughs> is that these are the teenager characters? The, like, so these are the sidekick heroes that existed basically for the 90s. Mm-hmm. Is what this team with a couple new additions because Teen Titans right now is a weird amalgamation of some newer, younger, like DC Rebirth characters mixed with. Well, Raven is still well, on the mixed team. with like D H Raven and D H Beast Boy. Boy. Um, so it's it's weird, and Starfire's on that team, but then there's Titans, which Where, has like, Dick, Dick Grayson and, and Tana Troy. And then Cyborg is on Justice League, and then Cyborg's on Justice League, but so, also. This, and again, you can tell that we've not read this book, but um, this can exist in continuity. Well, so is Young Justice going to be the alternate Earth? Story? I would, no, you keep saying that. And, and I would relax on that, actually, because sure. by the time most people hear this, that issue is probably going to be in their hands. So uh, um, it's going to be in continuity. There's not going to be any alternate world. And I, it, it, whatever. Um, to be honest with you, that statement doesn't even matter because right now, if you want to like literally look at DC continuity, it is a mess. It is an mm-hmm. astounding mess. But I'm fine with it because for the last couple of years, especially since Rebirth, DC has kind of just loosely been like, yeah, everything kind of happened. And it doesn't matter. And if you just can kind of work on that, like that's what this book is. Yes, there's a character in this book that has not existed since their last reboot, but it's whatever. Uh, to me, I'm more concerned about... What does this book say that Teen Titans is not already saying? Mm Because they're the same team, just different titles. Although I do admit the Young Justice is the better title. I mean, what do you feel about it? You're, You're a bigger Teen Titans fan than I am. The reason I keep bringing up the idea of an alternate world or an alternate universe or or maybe that this is a time capsule story is because it's the only way I'm interested in it. Okay. Um right now. I'm barely interested in Titans and Teen Titans existing mm-hmm. in the same universe, except for the most part, they've been good stories. Well, and they've done it. I think they've done a good job on the Titans or the adults, the Teen Titans, I agree, or the kids. But for me, I only need one sidekick team. I, I know agree. there's all of these characters, and frankly, I don't care about Lilith. 
cut Lilith, make her Raven. There are characters that I can do without. I yeah, don't yeah. need each of these teams to have eight people on them. Well, it's also um, the idea is like it's almost weird now because it's almost if you think about it, it's a Justice League team for each of the Robins we have. Yeah, absolutely. That's exactly that is a thousand percent what it is. Wouldn't it be nice if the Batgirls got the same consideration? Hmm. Well, I'll tell you what, Batgirl should be on Young Justice. Why well, not? Well, depending on your back. I mean, well, Barbara should be in Titans. Or and, and or, Cassie should be in Young I Justice. I mean, I guess you could make the argument that Batgirl is leading the birds of prey. Yeah, it's true. However, the title's I not being published think anymore, though. It's not. And I think when you look at the scope of the impact of these teams and what they mean to the overall DC universe, Birds of Prey is at the bottom of this barrel. Mm -hmm. Um, And I love Birds of Prey and there are fabulous Birds of Prey stories. And we've talked a lot about them extensively. I own several of the series. We'll probably wind up with a Birds of Prey lesson at some point. But I mean, compared to Young Justice, compared to Titans, compared to Teen Titans in terms of ability to recognizable. Yep. In terms of being recognizable in terms of impact on the overall continuity, Birds of Prey is at the bottom of that. Um... So I don't know. I mean, the main reason, too, they're bringing this title back is because of the new show as well. It's a thousand. It's a thousand it's percent. Why? Um, but it just it feels like a crowded playing field. And let's forget about the fact that there are going to be character crossovers. This is all the same market. Mm hmm. So you're now going to be asking people, are you buying Teen Titans? Are you buying Titans? Or are you buying Young Justice? Some yep. people can't afford to buy all three. Well, it's the same thing as Just League. It's the same thing as like, it's like okay, if you're a Just League fan, mm-hmm. which Just League team do you buy? Do you buy Just League? Do you buy Just League of America? Do you buy Just League Odyssey? Uh-huh. Do you buy Just League Dark? Do you buy Justice League of Animals? What do you buy? And and, and I think right now the, the marketing editorial side of DC is hoping that um, people will love the show and people who love this, like they're hoping that the experience Excitement and the brand power of Young Justice will carry into sales. Mm-hmm. It remains to be seen. The first issue, and again, if you're listening to this after, the first issue will sell well. Now, uh, the issue ones always sell well. It'll be interesting to see if it carries over. Uh, the only thing I need is I just need a distinct reason for why the teams exist. Uh-huh. Now, there is a very easy way to make this series distinct. Again, the issue's already been written, the issue's already been drawn. If they make Young Justice about, oh, hey, Impulse, Superboy, you haven't been around for years. Who are you? How do you exist? Mm -hmm. And that's the team's mission is, are these, again, because there's also like a Teen Lantern. There's There's Teen Lantern, there's Amethyst, there's Wonder Twins. So if it's the idea that these teen heroes are popping up and nobody has any idea who they are, Mm -hmm. if this is the team that fixes continuity... I'd be kind of in. You know what? That's kind of cool because Tim also was the character during the death of Bruce Wayne who was investigating Bruce through time. So maybe he finds all these clues. I doubt that's what they're doing, but like, again. I'm going to be really rude. I almost think that's too smart. We almost. Uh, it's I, so I think smart. We pi- I think we pitched a pretty good Young Justice series right now. So uh, <laughs> call at DC Comics. Yeah, let him know. <laughs> uh, tap on Mr. Bennis's shoulder and ask him to uh, step aside. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. No, so we, we, we're, we're fans of him, so it's cool. Yeah, we are. We have a huge yeah. amount of I'm excited stuff. for you. Yeah, but, but again, at the look, time we're all going Look, we're all going to read issue one. Yeah. I just, when I look at it on paper, it looks like a crowded marketplace to me. Yeah, so that's yeah. just why I wanted to bring it up. Yeah, sure. It's just the thing. Uh, I, I know they're not going to do it as an alternate world because they've so far canceled every alternate world book they've had. But that's what I want it to be. And they were, and they were, and they were all good. <laughs> I know. So uh, I'm R. sorry. R.I.P. Earth 2. Yeah. I'm excited because Connor's back. Cool. And he's uh, in the best costume. Well, you know what? They put Tim in his Robin costume in that art. So let's talk about the teaching tweet. <laughs> the teaching tweet is where Professor Ashley and 140 characters or less on based on the original Twitter does a tweet based on this lesson. You can find it at our Twitter at GHL Podcast. Young Justice. There are no Teen Titans. Hashtag silence. <laughs> then you put like some some uh, Young Justice gif in the bottom. All right, there. cool. Okay. All right, let's move into the final section of this podcast, the honor roll, where if you go to Apple Podcasts or iTunes and leave us a five star review, you can write whatever you want. And, uh, you know, for helping us bump up in the Apple algorithm, it really does help the podcast, actually. So if, you, have, huge if you actually haven't done that, please go do that. Um, we uh, read your thing on the air and then you get to come to the teacher's lounge. There you go. Who joins? The first person joining is Tiger Shark Cub. Wow. Who says, my favorite podcast ever. Thank you. Thank you. The first episode of yours that I found was your hundredth one. Wow. I've been hooked ever since. Being in class with Ashley and Jason is one of the highlights of my week. I also think you should do a geek history lesson on Angela. 
Thank you for your request. The uh, Spawn Angel. Mainly because of her very interesting comic book history, starting with Spawn Comics and now the sister of Thor and Loki. Thank you for all you do. Class is dismissed. Ooh, I love the way you ended uh, that. Tiger Shark Cub. That's really uh, cute. Do you remember what the 100th episode was? Jason Todd. No, West Coast no, Avengers. It was West Coast was, Avengers. Dun, dun, dun. 50 was Lois Lane. 100 was West Coast. 150 was Jason Todd. 200 was... Was 150 Jason Todd? Wasn't it? I don't remember. <laughs> I don't think it was. I don't, it might have been. 200, I think we completely forgot about. No, I think 200 was... Uh, it, 200 was... X Force, I think. Um, oh, it was. I think it was X Force. And then two fifty. X Force, which we're going to get to, uh, I think, in March. Um, I can give a clue to that. You want? Should we give a slight clue? No, uh, but two fifty. No, okay. Two fifty. <laughs> it's not our five year anniversary. It's the one after that. No, our two fifty. Our two hundred. Our two hundred and fifty is our number one requested character. Should I give a clue? Jason is you, teaching you it. You said no. No, you shouldn't give a clue. Okay, fine. The other person joining Tiger Shark Hub in, <laughs> on the honor roll is, I'm going to butcher your last name, and I'm sorry. I've met you in real life. You're a lovely man. Albert Wiradama? Dharma? I'm so sorry. I killed that. En route to my degree in geekdom. I have been listening to this show since mid-2017, and I just want to say you. this podcast is truly the best. Jason and Ashley are great hosts, or should I say professors, in all things geek. It's damn straight. I love how they break down all the story arcs and the characters each episode, but my favorite segment right now is the recommended reading. As someone who wants to read and learn more about the character, it's hard to know where to start and which comics to buy, but they give me the best advice every time. Thank you, Jason and Ashley, for being such great individuals and... Oops. I can't read. That helped the Geekdom community to grow. Thank you, Albert. I'm sorry I Thanks, can't dude. say your last name. Have we name. met him in real life? Uh, we've met him at a couple different conventions. Oh, yeah. He's oh, I'm sorry. very lovely and very kind to us oh, on cool. Twitter. Thanks, man. Uh, uh, and, and you know what? He shouted out the recommended reading. That is true. We have our recommended reading for every episode. And a lot of times when people will be, people will come on Twitter and they'll be like, hey, I want to read Blue Beetle or I want to read uh, Amethyst or what do I do? And every time I just give them the link because it's such a great, re- it is, it's now just a great resource. So just, you know, I would say if you're, if you're curious about mm-hmm. that, just go look at a recommended reading. I gar- I bet you we've covered, we've covered, I bet like 60% of the characters you would ever ask. Also, if you're not sure, you can Google geek history lesson, <laughs> comma, whatever title or whatever character you're interested in. If they have a recommended reading page, it'll be the second link. The episode page will be first and then recommended reading will be second. So you, you don't even ask, have to ask us. You can ask. It's fine. I don't mind. Don't it. Ask I can us. ask. Ashley just, I made a giant giant playlist of all of our Spider-Verse episodes and someone asked me what Spider-Man comic should I read and I almost had an infarction. <laughs> oh, but uh, thank you to both of you. We, thank you and thank you. We appreciate uh, everybody's five star review. questions. Welcome inside the teacher's lounge. Um, there are some nice, nice leftover fruitcakes from Christmas from Mr. Scott. What does Mr. Scott teach? He teaches Ancient Egyptian wood making. Great. <laughs> uh, do you want to talk? Stick around. No, we we we, we, we got to go through all the stuff. Oh, okay, you let's know, do. But we're, we sh- I guess this is a brand new year, so we should announce that. Like, if you don't know, once we do all our plugs, we do do another discussion section called the hashtag Stick Around. But before that, we got to remind <laughs> you to subscribe to this podcast everywhere you fill podcasts in your ear holes. That is an iTunes. That is the Spotify. That is the SoundCloud. That is the iHeartRadio. That is the Stitcher. That is the many other places. Apple podcast that you can listen to and don't forget to follow us on social media at ghl podcast on twitter where on facebook ashley on facebook.com slash geek history lesson yeah that's right you can follow me on twitter at jawin j-a-w-i-i-n see if you can figure out the secret conspiracy that's going on on my twitter right now and then ashley you can follow her <laughs> at ash at ashley v robinson and now we're at hashtag stick around this is what are we talking about I really just want to talk about how good the costumes look on The Young Justice Season 3. Don't you think they look so good? This, this is this is it? <laughs> <laughs> this no, is all, this all we're talking about? No, I'm just kidding. I mean, they were designed by the great Phil Barassa. Uh, no, uh, shout out a, to Phil Barassa. A friend of, uh, uh, an acquaintance of mine who is who's a lovely man. And, uh, Tweeted no, him and told me he wouldn't be on the show. <laughs> uh, uh, there's a lovely man and he, uh, yeah, he made some badass designs. But um, No, what I really yeah. wanted, I'm just kidding. What I really wanted to ask you was... Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we've already pitched, I think, a really kick-ass Young Justice series, but... Yep, I'm calling you... Brian Michael Bendis right now. Hold on. It's ringing. Bring, 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 bring. 
He didn't answer. I'm sorry. No. Okay. Yeah. It's raining. Smart man. Went. Smart man. I mean, I wouldn't answer my phone if I was writing books because people would probably just call <laughs> me and they'd be like, hey, I want to write that thing. I'd be like, OK, you he's, call. He's probably writing. You got it. He's probably writing. Young that's, a, that's a secret, kids. If you call us, uh, you can figure out our phone number and call us. We'll just give you Jupiter Jet Do volume two. Do not. <laughs> I am not inviting you to call me. <laughs> Ashley wants no internet guff for 2019. I, I love this. I uh, what are we talking don't about? Don't call Besides, me. Besides, uh, you know. Uh, no, I wanted to ask if you, if Brian Michael Bendis says, hey, Jason, I would love for you to fill in. Um, I got to go to Puerto Rico with my kids on vacation. Oh, that's a great vacation. Uh, with my kids. Uh, I don't know his kids' names. Miles and Riri. Uh, the he has like five kids. Name. Yeah, I know. He's got a hundred yeah, he's got a lot of kids. kids. Um, they're all cute. I live for them on Instagram. Yeah, they're great. Um... If he was like, hey, Jason, we're going to Puerto Rico. Okay. Um, to, going see to see Hamilton, the Hamilton? Awesome. With my five children. Oh, man. That's like next week. <laughs> I got to hurry. Yeah, it is. Um, <laughs> well, maybe they're going in March. I know. don't. Sure. Um, you're going to. I need you to fill in on this issue of Young Justice yep. for me. Um, the only thing that DC asked me to do was uh, add a new member to the roster. This is a lot. You can pick whoever you want. This Who is, would you add to Young Justice? This is a lot of. Uh... Well, he, Qual- qualifiers know, B- on this. BMB, as we like to call it. I issue, a demanding I boss. get one issue to add like a character to the roster. Yeah, who would you, get, who would you add to Young Justice? Uh, no doubt Blue Beetle. Jaime, Blue Beetle. Yeah, of course. Jaime, because one, his title was canceled. Uh, and two, just like Secret, um, I'm going to say this right now. Jaime Reyes Blue Beetle is the best young character that DC is, is the best newly created character that DC has made in the last 15 years. It is Jaime Reyes. One, because he lives in a border town, El Paso. Two, because his family knows his secret and they're not ashamed of it like the cliche superheroes. They actually help him with it. I honestly can't believe that CW hasn't greenlit. I can't believe that he doesn't have, it would be the most timely TV show of all time. But also one of the number one television consuming market is uh, is Latinx. Yep, Latinx. So like, hire Tyler Posey. I don't think he's Mm -hmm. doing anything right now and make him the lead of the show. No, it'd be Jaime. In a a dream world, if I had more than one shot, then I would add the secret. But like, if I only get one, also Jaime's costume think about Patrick Gleason's art would look just great. Oh, it, His look, costume's so good. Um, again, haven't read the issue. Can't, Designed by can't, Cully Hamner. Oh, love him too. Can't mm-hmm. speak to it. That book is going to look. Or Cully Hammer? Hammer. Hamner. Hamner. It's right. going to look effing amazing. Yeah, Patrick Gleason it's kills gonna it. look so... Patrick I'm, Gleason, friend of uh, Geek History Lesson. He's been on Geek History Lesson, hasn't he? Yeah, yes. I was like, more than once, I think. More than once, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, Pat. <laughs> uh, yeah, Patrick is great. And, um, you know, uh, he, yeah, he... Jaime Reyes. Who would you do? That's a tough who would you add? question. Not who would you do. That's not right. Who would I do? Um, well, they're all underage. Connor? <laughs> um, ew, no. <laughs> Don't. Ew, that's so gross. I hate Connor so much. Um, it would be tough for me not to say Cassandra Kane, but I don't know how old she is anymore. She's a teenager person. Um, you know, and I would honestly, I would like to pick someone who's not in the Bat family. Um, I would do Secret if I could. I would want to race bend her. Uh, okay. I just think there's a more interesting Enough choice than again yeah, another I Caucasian person. I get what you're saying. Person, I get what you're saying. So. But that's tough because there are so many good teen superheroes. I mean, I actually think Amethyst joining Young Justice is a brilliant, is an inspired choice. Amethyst, I think, and Wonder Twins are, they're not characters I, I particularly mm-hmm. care for, but they're kind of, they have good names, but they're blank slate. So you can do whatever you want. Like, you can have yep. the potential to make these defining this, moments and for And the these same characters. thing about making and, a, a and whatever Teen Lantern yeah, is going to be. And then making a granddaughter for Jonah Hex, I think is genius. Oh, Ginny Hex. That's Ginny right. Hex, yeah. Yep. It's, it's, that's a really smart move. Uh, I think they intentionally named her after Harry Potter character, but that's my conspiracy theory. Yeah, you're probably right. So, All right, cool. That's there you it. Go. Yeah, All right, close up the it. podcast. Uh, yeah. Um, it's only episode 240, Ashley. <laughs> <laughs> Did you forget how to close out the podcast? I'm so tired. Uh, <laughs> thank you so much for listening to our. <laughs> you're <laughs> welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you so much for listening to our Geek Guest Reels on Young Justice. Uh, follow the podcast at GHL Podcast. Follow me on Twitter at Ashley B. Robinson. We already did those. Jason we Joe already did those. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? doing? <laughs> I'm just seeing how... This has been a long episode. <laughs> I know. I'm just seeing how much longer. It's a long justice. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, by the end of this lesson, we yeah. have to transcend and become old justice. Okay, cool. I'm fine with that. Um... Thank you for listening, Professor Jason. Will you please dismiss the class? Hang it to save my catchphrase. What's your catchphrase? Jason, Ju- I'm Jason oh, Justice yeah, Inman. I'm, sure I'm, I'm, I'm Jason Justice Inman. You need to dismiss the class? Class dismissed. <laughs>